Welcome everybody to the Monday, April 29th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 6.30, it will be a joint meeting of the Select Board, Finance Committee, and Capital Improvements Committee. Um, this meeting is being recorded on FCAT and on Zoom for the town website. If for any reason those recordings fail, um, the meeting will still proceed live and in person here on Academy Hill Road. Um, first item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of April 22nd and April 23rd. Um, April 22nd was Yeah, April 22nd was a very rare and very necessary emergency meeting um, to discuss and vote on the sale of a burial plot in for Conway, Conway Town Cemetery, South Park and Rampart Road. Um, that sale, for numerous legal reasons, had to be <coughs> done that day. Um, so we had an emergency meeting with no advance notice. Sorry. Um, but sometimes that has to happen. So, um, and the 23rd was, of course, our regular select board meeting. Um, and I've taken a look at both of those. I'm okay with yeah. them. Me too. Moved to approve the minutes of April 22nd and 23rd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, there are no warrants. Meetings attended by select board members. <coughs> um, Nonsense. Oh, executive session. Yeah. That was, yeah. Um, yes, also, same here. And um, I guess that's about it. And public comments, anybody? Unfinished business, none. New business. Um, since. Um, since. Julia. Uh, uh, Julia. Hi. <laughs> um, all right, well, since. So the um, first item is to appoint Julia Washburn to the Open Space Committee for a term ending June 30th, 2026. Julia, do you consent to that appointment? I do, okay. gladly. Um, and <laughs> so <laughs> we, we sort of have a tradition of um, when somebody's joining a town committee for the first time, we yeah. ask them to come and just this is a chance to explain, to talk to the, the town, camera, everybody about who you are and what brings you to town. If you want, let's talk about whatever you want. It's okay. <laughs> Great. Um, well, my name is Julia Washburn and um, my husband and I moved to Conway in November um, and uh, we uh, we left, uh, well, my whole life I was spent in, in and around Washington, D.C., so we left the city <laughs> and came to heaven on earth in Conway, Massachusetts. <laughs> we live um, at the end of New Hall Road, um, which, as you may or may not know, is a property that um, used to belong to Emmy Howe, and uh, which she was not there over the past five years, so... We, um, we're so pleased to be able to purchase it, and we're, we love it, it's so beautiful. So we're just sort of working now to kind of get ourselves situated, figure out what we got there, and as a matter of fact, we've been taking a permaculture course to figure out the best way to manage the property. Um, so uh, I recently retired from a 35-year career with the National Park Service, um, and I am uh, trained as an environmental educator and museum educator, but turned resources manager, turned park manager, also worked for a bit at the policy level, um, and uh, my last job within the Park Service was managing Rock Creek Park, which is a large urban park that wow. runs down the center of Washington. Park. It's a fabulous, beautiful, yeah. amazing yeah. place. Um, I was so privileged to work there, and that's the park I grew up <coughs> in, so it's nice to be there. Hard to leave, um, but we wanted to be in a place um, where it was quieter and um, and that we could have a piece of land to live on. And my, I have uh, 
just been retraining as an aromatherapist and my business, I have a, I'm starting a new business. My business partner and I recently, back in November, started a, a business called um, Willow Botanicals, which is all natural, fine perfumes and aromatherapy. Um, and we hope to incorporate permaculture into the way that we cultivate the plants where we get our essential oils and our medicines from. Um, so it's all a new adventure and uh, I heard about the Open Space Committee from Mac McCoy uh, and uh, he's been kind enough to befriend us. He used to live near where we used to live and uh, I heard what he was doing at the Open Space Committee and I said, can I be part of that? I, I might have one or two things that I could offer and also I also feel strongly it's important to be civically engaged in the community where you live. So this was a way for me to kind of put my toe in the water and get to know people and um, provide some help, especially with the South River Meadow. Um, so I'm very excited to be here and really thrilled that you're making time for me on your agenda. Janet Chase captures another. I know she's <laughs> excellent person. And she gets them all. She's, she's, she's a fireball. She's wonderful. She is. I love. I love Janet. So uh, you know, welcome to Conway. That was a fantastic introduction to the town. <laughs> but you like that? Was just your A. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, just um, I'm Phil Cantor, I'm the current chair of the select board. This is Erica Goldman, my esteemed colleague um, to your right. Bob Armstrong, former select board member and select board chair, now Capital Improvement Committee. Um, John from the Finance Committee. This is uh, from Ronnie Blanchard, our town administrator, and the assistant to the town administrator, Adam. Um, and our last but not least, the town clerk. Lord. We've met. We have, we have, so, um, yeah. And you'll have to come see me to swear in and get paperwork that you need okay. for this. So. And bring my rabies certificate for my dog. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Another dog in town, too. But, um, and the empty chair is, is uh, Chris, so he's not here. Okay. We'll be talking shortly. Bye, so, um, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Julia Washburn to the Open Space Committee for a term ending June 30th, 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Yeah. Yay, thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to sneak out unless you'd no, like no, me to listen in. Pretty, yes. Okay. You're, oh, you're, you're invited to listen in. I know, I know I'm invited. <laughs> thank you. All right. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So next, um, next is Lori's here to try and treat her I was told to be here, so I'm here. <laughs> no. Okay. So, um, you see in the, the, uh, yeah. the, the, yep. the letter? I messed up. And, um, so you know, the reason I was, uh, I got here just a couple of minutes before six is because I was receiving a delegation from the Historical Commission um, who did a drop-in, because um, I guess they saw this in the report. Um, oh, well, uh, I, and, and, and so, um, just for example, yeah. and this is one of the biggest right here. This is my, re these, are, these are just a few pages out of my retention schedule. And one of those boxes that we found that they had taken that was in their area, um, one of the boxes that we had found that they had taken that was in their closet, uh, that box and of just, annual reports. Just to narrate what you're saying. Oh, sorry, the, but um, yes, so, the box of- Because me and you know what we're talking right, about, but um, nobody else does, so. The box with all of the Old Town annual reports were taken out of the vault with my permission and brought upstairs and locked into the Historical Commission's closet. Records retention, state law requires that the town clerk keep these permanently. Um, the box of Cemetery Commission information was also taken out of the vault and brought up there along with multiple, like two and a half, three shelves worth of old town record books that were on the select board shelves, which is minutes for meetings, decisions made at, you know, select board meetings, town meetings, minutes from the school committee, minutes from this committee, that committee. These are the old when they used to handwrite them in the ledgers. They just, 
cleaned off two and a half shelves worth of binding books and took them upstairs. And again, meeting minutes, permanent, meet, agendas, notices, these, these are all you know, things that, they're public record for one, I can't make them available for somebody who's requesting something if I can't access them. They're supposed to be in my care as the, keep, the keeper of the records, and I can't take care of them if I don't have possession of them. And you don't have a key, no? I, it's there. I, I mean, I do, there, I have access to the key, but if somebody needs to come in and they want to see something, do I want to dig out the key, run up into the gymnasium, go digging through their stuff to try and find the book, or the box, or the binder, when it's supposed to be here in my vault under my control? Yeah, yeah. Did, what, was this removed because of the moisture issues in the vault, or was it? Lee suggested that they move their stuff out. Mm -hmm. They took their stuff and then proceeded to start taking my stuff. I was not here. She wasn't paying attention because she was working, and they were just carrying uh, armfuls of old bound books. And I, I <laughs> when did that occur? About a week and a half, two weeks ago. I'm I'm just I'm flabbergasted. I'm I'm a little flabbergasted that they felt that that was okay to take those. But they were old, so they all, they're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and, and you know the the way that I became part of this was that Monday morning when it was apparent that the town needed to sell a cemetery plot, mm -hmm. there is a specific uh, form for that that the the plot that yours has to be designated. And it's a certain plot, and there's a numerical designation. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem was that this town hadn't sold a cemetery plot in years. Um, but the other part of the problem was the book that would record that or have some sort of numerical information was not in the vault. Mm -hmm. And so Lori and I went up search for that book and looked in the closet and they did have a lot of stuff in that closet. Um, and I, I, mean, I mean, He just heard me start to go a little <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Because it's very, I, first thing I grabbed was one box and it was all the annual reports, which mm -hmm. are very clear are supposed to be mm -hmm. in, the clerk's fault. in the clerk's fault under yeah and I'm supposed to keep those forever and whoever follows me and follows that person and the only ones I have left now are the 10 years I have in my file cabinet because they thought they took them all they took them all but did you bring them back down or no because I didn't I didn't want to do the same thing they did I didn't want to go into their locked closet and take things even though they're supposed to be down here. I didn't want to do the same thing. So if you need help carrying them. Yeah. Give well, me a call. I figured this, I'm happy to come this would be a more appropriate way of yeah. addressing it. I yeah. mean, so I, I didn't want to, I, I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. As angry as I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um. You know, Lee, the, the assessors refer to those books for um, research on old town roads. Discontinuances, private drives, mm -hmm. all of those decisions are, they're in those books. And, it, and again, a lot of the old committee minutes that were handwritten in the journals, they took them. They just took them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> old street lists, which, again, they took them <laughs> so, Sorry, I'm a little. No, I. Um, it, that, it is a thing. It is definitely a thing. This is not an imaginary problem. Um, and the. You know, I. So they, they, they came by. Um, the one who was doing the talking was Leah Stone. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, That, but, but basically, they feel that there's been a series of misunderstandings that have snowballed, um, um, and that b their request is that before the select board creates a policy that affects them um, and the way they see it, what they do, 
that we either have a sit down with them and Lori, um, or that we um, postpone the, discuss the discussion and voting this till next week so that they can all attend. I mean, I wasn't asking for anything more than a policy stating the records be kept in the vault in my office and not leave this building <laughs> and be returned before I leave for the day. I mean, it, it's a pretty simple, like, like it was before they went and took everything. Is they would come in when I was working, I would open the vault for them, and I, they would go in and out of the vault and sit at the table and do all their research, and we'd put it all back and lock up the vault at the end of the day. And then they just decided to take it. <laughs> so, so you you weren't there. I was not there. It was my day off. So how did they get in? Lee. Okay. But did, did we have we so we haven't had an official policy about this. Well, I wouldn't personally. Was, I, I wouldn't think one. It was would be never needed. You don't take another right, department's yeah. stuff. You know <laughs> that should be just common courtesy. So I really didn't think that a policy was necessary. No, I totally understand. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I just so I, I I know from just from listening to them, they do not feel they do not um, feel that they took anything without permission. I wasn't there to give them permission to so take they, my stuff. They, <laughs> I I understand that. I'm I'm relaying what I was told, um, and that. I, I guess that that the other person in that office was giving permission and not to take their belongings, not to take others. And I'll please note that two out of three, two out of two and a half, three shelves that they took, those were all select book books. That was all your department's books. Granted, I'm the keeper of them, but if you had to research back into things that happened earlier that the select board did, they're gone. What was the purpose of taking the records in the first place? So their their <laughs> statutory their statutory charge is to um, they're the ones that designate historical landmarks and mm -hmm. um, do historical research on places. Mm -hmm. um, um, the society does historical research on artifacts and things. Mm -hmm. The commission is about places um, and. Their feeling was that the, whatever they removed from that was for that research purpose, and they are, are working on a thing about discontinued roads themselves, something like that. Um, but you know, I, I guess the takeaway from that, from the lengthy conversation I had with them, was that um, you know, with with Julius, uh, was that. You know, they, they do not wish to have facts out there that tarnish them. They, mm -hmm. they, they feel that there's an explanation for everything and that they wish for a chance to discuss these things either privately with I'd be us perfectly or, happy or, if they just brought them back. Well, that, I mean, that... That's, I, that's all I they, care about. I'm just curious why we would, why we needed to have records in, in two separate Places, right? Was it for accessibility purposes? Was that? When I think in some cases, aren't there like this the only copy well, of the record that exists? So the, it's, the things I have in there, yes. I'll, yeah, the majority so, of it is the only. Right. Well, it, well, why would you move it out in the first so place? Because so, I'm not always here to unlock. So it's the about accessibility so to they, the records. Up until last year, they the historical commission had a file cabinet in the room next adjoining us, and. Um, had all of their meetings there, mm -hmm. and um, they were asked to go upstairs since there's space upstairs, and also, um, now I, I hesitate to characterize anything and impugn their, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, but you know that that. Um, there, there is a series of, you know, that they... There was a series of events leading up to... Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm sure thank things... Up to things me were, requesting that the block be changed. Yeah, and I'm sure things were all done with the best of intentions of events, and everything yeah. else. And I, I, I'm just curious, you know, why we would tr have this concept of retaining critical town records, whether they're under your control or not, 
in separate locations, and why wouldn't we keep them all that collected together in one secure location okay. where everybody could have access? Right. I mean, right now needs they're it. in a location where only they have access. Well, well some right. of the records, their records that they properly they did should have they upstairs. They did take. The, yes, they did take a lot of their records out, but and then that's, they. That's fine. But then right. they yes, but then they just continued. Right. Right. They kept right. going. Right. And they, there are. It sounds to me that there are instances where there's information that is crossover. Right. I mean, it it could belong to the to the town, but it also could fall under their purview as well. I mean, are there? There's not. There's not. A, you it, can't draw a bright line between. Well, some. they access it for for research purposes. Right. Right. They they are. Um, I mean, they all belong to the town. They, right. Yeah, they all they, belong to the they town. They belong to the town and... But some are under your control. Most of them are, if the majority except for town administrator or personnel and county mm -hmm. are pretty much, mm -hmm. and it's just falls under the category of the town clerk is the keeper of the records. Mm -hmm. so, um, so can I offer another perspective? Because I think a couple of things are half, a couple of things are concurrent. There's miscommunication issues, obviously. There seems to be process issues. And to me, in terms of the nature of these records, this reminds me more of how you would operate if you were going to a research library as opposed to a lending library. When yes. you go to a research library, you do not take anything out of the collection. You check it out, you sit in the room, the librarian brings it to you, you do your research and the librarian puts it back in, into the collection. Mm -hmm. It's not in circulation. You can't check it out. So from a communication standpoint, there seems to be a fundamental, uh, you know, they have a different view of how they should access these records. So to, I guess to Phil's point, I mean, I see the, I see the, uh, the benefit of just having an open conversation with them to understand what made them act in the way that they did. But just from my observation, I do think there needs to be like a process and a policy. Yeah. Well, there, about I mean, there, there are state laws that dictate well, that they're the, mine. I'm not, oh, I'm, oh yeah. I know there are state I laws. I mean, I had asked for just, just simple. I mean, I asked a policy be put in place dictating that the record books binders be housed in the vault located in my office. They're only to be, only to be removed by me and they're not to leave the area. Well, ever leave the building. So. I, I understand that, and I understand that there is a state law that supports these records, but I think there's a middle piece that's missing is if, if somebody has a legitimate uh, need to know to, to review those records, oh. it's, it's how do they access them, and are they, do they leave town hall or not leave town hall? They should never leave town hall because the books so can't be replaced, yeah. but up until they remove them, they, they would come in when I'm here, and I'm here a lot. And I would just open the vault for them, and they would spread out on the conference table in there. Which is or more or less the, lending, the research library model. Yeah, or they would come out here, and they would eat either the two rooms, and they would just okay. do what so they needed to do. It sounds like we need a formal policy, but Phil, it sounds like you're saying that the Historical Commission would like to have well, an I'm, audience before we actually... Well, we don't have the policy have written policy. anyway, so right. Um, right. So, right. so right. It, you know, that seems like in the time that we need to write the policy, which would be we couldn't vote on it until next week anyway. In that time, we could, uh, you know. Um, in the meantime, I'm very nervous because these are all out there. In the mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm right. Just, you know. um, they're just out there. I mean, I absolutely yeah, support just us putting uh, policies and procedures in place for the access to the town historical records. Yeah, and you, again, I, I mean, I never asked for this because I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't. <laughs> no. no, and that was the thing. We were, you know, we needed to, we needed to sell a, a cemetery deed. Yeah. A plot. Well, I knew they had taken and that books. Was a, it, it was a, that was. Well, that was a catalyst. Government that, is that, that was a thing. No, <laughs> government is always reactive, not proactive. Right, right. So, I mean, I mean honestly, kind of when I walked in the vault the Monday <laughs> after they took the stuff, I saw the empty shelves. Yeah. I knew yeah. they had taken it. Yeah. But there was so many things going on, I didn't have time to <laughs> say, okay, what is missing and what do I have to do? Right. Until we went, I went into the vault looking for the cemetery commission. Mm -hmm of information and it was like oh that's not here either 
Yeah. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Do you think any of the librarians at the field library would help to have some insight as to how to set up this process? Well, we're limited in physical space and everything else, but I think yeah. your analogy that it is a, re a research library is, is accurate. Um, and that it obviously shows that you have spent time in a research library. Well, um, doing uh, research. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, but that is, that is how it works. And well, that, that makes sense. I only suggested that to the extent that librarians, they're trained in library science. You know, that's what they do. They yeah. have yeah. degrees in it. And they may have insights as to how to create a workable process around this. Not asking them to do it, just to sort yeah. of support it in some. Can we do something so you can sleep this week? I mean, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 yeah. yeah I, can we put another lock on the cabinet upstairs that you have the key? Well, it, it, it's, it's the, the, there is a lock on the closet. Not all of it's in the closet. Some of them is just on tables in their area. You know, that the mm. big area they, they house up there. Some of it's just out on those tables. Some of them is. Of your things? Yes. Some I mean, of it's just locked why don't we in that just closet. bring them down? Um, I, I don't want to make things worse. Right. I really don't. I don't. Well, I mean, what you want is a formal policy about the management of town records. Yeah, or, I I, like I said, I'd be happy if I just got them back. We had always, I had always had the open door, and, they, and I've always made it clear, and they've used that, that if I am here, please come in, and I'll open the vault, go in and out, get what you need, do what you need, I don't, you know, I don't keep people from accessing their yeah. records. I don't hoard them. But I think we had a formal but policy that would be, you know, like it, if you're not, if, if there's a day that you're not here and anyone in the office has a question about someone coming in, there'd be a policy to refer yes. to which says you can't take a box out of here. This is like, this is how we deal with official public records I, if you want access to them. I, so I could think, live with that. Yeah. So. And, you know, and again, yes, that you just said the key word, public records. These are all public records. And now I don't have them to answer public record requests. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it sounds like we need a policy, but I think we probably need to have an agenda for next week. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's a busy time. I just, I, if I had known that Lee was asking them to take, you know, to take their stuff out to protect it, I would have come down and witnessed to make sure that only their stuff left. Yeah. I think. I think a meeting would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, should we have like even before we put this on? The I think it would have to be very well be moderated kind of because I'm I'm feeling very sensitive about yeah. the whole situation. It, mm -hmm. I, I know I know all of them, and they're all they're all longtime town residents. And, and, and yeah. I know that, but that doesn't and that doesn't make a difference. That doesn't change right. that you know. And I know Sarah feels that anything with the words historic deems it automatically the, biz the property of the historical commission. Well, I, I would say, I would argue that that analysis is easy to perform because you would just balance that assumption against the state law. Because the state law will define what is a public record, and if anybody, whether it's a historical commission or somebody else, feels that they have an interest in that item, and they believe it belongs to them, they have to prove that it is an exception to the state law, right? I, yeah. So were you suggesting that we have a, they have a private meeting, not necessarily the select board first, or? Well, I, well, mean, the, the, I, the, I, I think we need a policy. We don't have anything before us, like we have no formal policy to vote on right now. So I guess, I, I don't know whether we all sit down outside of the select board meeting with the historical commission and you and work out a policy and then bring that to our next meeting to vote on. But I, but I do, I, I think there needs to be a policy. There I think, it, I think it would like be a very good policy. idea that if it came to a meeting between me and the historical commission that it would be a really good idea to do it during one of these because it could get, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> right. So next Monday. <laughs> Two <a. laughs> I'm, <laughs> Well. <laughs> okay. Wait, your money's on Lori, uh, you said? <laughs> And Just because I have the law behind me. <laughs> Off the record, come. <laughs> no, I think we. Draft, I, drafting of the policy, proposed policy, should be assigned to whom? 
Lori and I can take care of that. All right. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I. It was great. You'll give me the. You'll I, give I me the NGOs what I want. and I'll have right policy, and we'll just do a draft and. Yeah. And if we need to tweak it at well, the meeting, I was going to say I didn't even pull MGLs. I just pulled pages out of the right. state retention. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. You know? And it should just be that any of those record books need to be in there. That and they are one. They are the only. You know, if something were to happen to those copies, That's it. it would be as devastating as when we had the fire and we lost a lot of our records. Yeah. It would be because they can't be replaced. And I thought that's why they were in the vault, because it's very fireproof. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're right. But they're not anymore. So, Veronique, I was going to suggest that when you are drafting that with Lori, what you would do is if Lori has the state records retentions, mm -hmm. are that, is that a policy or a regulation? These are, I don't I mean, it's the municipal records retention schedule. That okay, so, the, so, so there's the statute, which is the enacted legislation, and the, what you just have is the process. Mm -hmm. and the meeting of the two would be the Well, town I think process. that's actually the legal. You, you cannot get rid of your records. No, I know that. I know that. But right, so right. Be but it, and it, it, also, it also is broken down by, a lot of it's right. broken down by But generally, generally enacted legislation just enacts the law, and something like that is how to do it. Right, so you'd use both, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah. is who is supposed to and for how long. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, okay, it's two Mondays. I'm gonna miss back. Try to get your first, try to get your first clerk schedule 6 30. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right, and then, um, just, just to answer, just for the sake of those among you that are interested will just briefly discuss um, the one-day liquor license for the senior prom on June 1st. Oh, um, and I'm about the senior prom. Okay. So I'm the, a senior. I want to hear about the senior good, prom. Good, good. <laughs> so the, as, as you may or may not, as you may or may not know, um, as you may or may not know, we, we have our, our recipient, this is the second year in a row, recipient of a mass in motion grant from the State Office of Aging. Um, and it's administered through FERCOG. We meet one, the, it's mostly the Council of Aging, but also one member from the library, one member from the planning board, and one member from, I forget what other committee, and I represent the select board there. Um, and as part of that grant, they give us four thousand three hundred and something dollars. We bought a lot of these chairs with that last year, as well as some tables and other things. The refrigerator, the new refrigerator um, for the senior lunches. It's bigger, bigger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this year, the decision was made to spend some of that money on catering, food and beverages, and music for a senior prom, senior senior prom. Great idea. Um, and it, nobody, nobody has to dress in it, but. There is live music. There is we're voting on a beer and wine. It's and it's all at no and the, the some several caterers are being engaged. It's going to be really wow. yes. It is June first, which is uh, town, town meeting day. day. No, oh. ah, no, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes, it no, is. June 1st. Yeah. No, it is, but it's 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 at night. It's at night. So it's after Five. town meeting. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, everybody's everybody's going to want to loud me in. Yeah. So my my son was invited to provide live music, and he he's not old enough. He desperately wanted to. He's a very good musician. He has a whole band behind him, but he's graduating from high school that afternoon. Oh. So he did not. He had yeah. to decline the invitation. I think um, he was very disappointed. So, but so that's uh, I don't know. It should be nothing like that has ever happened. It'd be neat. There, there's the caterers providing food for 90 people, so that's what wow. they want to get. And it's, it's under the rotunda. Is the caterer providing the bartenders? Um, I, I know I'm not. So I, I um, but yeah, I, be, I believe so. Because mm -hmm. usually the, the people, the party that supplies the bartenders has the insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Liability insurance. Everybody, everybody, for, yeah, they, they only solicited bids from people with insurance. I know that. Um, who, could, who would supply bartenders? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe okay. so. Make sure you get a certificate of insurance. All right, all right. <laughs> See the coverage. All right, um, and then the other the other thing in um, May sixteenth, and I just want to let you all know about that too. May, yeah, May sixteenth, 
from 12 to 2. Also at the Field Memorial Library is the, um, the, the, the first ever thing as well. The county is having the, the, a meeting of all count, all towns in the county with their uh, councils of aging. Um, actually, anybody involved in elder affairs in the county. Um, anybody involved with elder affairs in the county as well as the state rep state representatives and uh, state office of aging people as well they're having a function here at field memorial and they're paying for the room and they're providing catering and everything too that's a luncheon but that's not for the public that's that right. actually is for any elected official in congress so uh, wow. or appointed in your case but, uh, um, and if anybody would like to go, I, there is a registration. I do have the registration, um, but that um, many count, many Conway rep, the Council of Aging people will be there. And is that, it's kind of feel like we have an ADA compliant bathroom. They do. The downstairs oh. is an, the downstairs is ADA accessible, oh. and yeah. it's I got a. There it. is a new ground floor bathroom. When they fixed up that meeting room downstairs, oh, okay. there is a, right. and then from that ground floor you can get onto the lift and get oh, a, take cool. the upstairs. Wow. The lift is like my single favorite thing in Conway. Right. <laughs> What's that? Yes. No, I know that. That's a lift from 1904. It's the, like the second, wow. second oh, wow. oldest lift in the state. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a motion um, that we approve a one-day liquor license for beer and wine only for the Council on Aging. Memorial Library for the senior column on June 1st. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cheers. Okay, so um, so with that, 630 um, warrant stuff. Warrant and more warrant. Yes, well, you've got capital. I, should call the, yeah, yeah, I, just call I call the finance committee, finance committee meeting to order. Right. And two should review the meeting. Uh, yes, yeah, the minutes from April 23rd. I, uh, I make a motion to review the, uh, to approve the uh, finance committee meeting minutes of April 23rd. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. 4 0. 4 0. Thank you. Sorry. And I call the Capital Improvements Committee meeting to order. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Open. We have no minutes to approve today. Aye. I don't know if Capital wanted to start. because there's, So there's four articles for Capital to approve, and then there's obviously Article 2 for the Select Board and Finance Committee, and then the Select yeah. Board has another five articles to approve. And Chris should be able to zoom in about 7.15. Okay. So my first question is, is I guess, are these article numbers, are they going to change? No, this is it. This is <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> Nothing's going to get shifted vote, around. They're going to vote to close the bar tonight. Okay. No more All right. So capital, yes. Capitals Articles 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11. 8, 9, 10, yeah. and 11. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to say to Roy and to Bob is none of this should be a surprise to any of us. Some of this is stuff that we that came up last year in town meeting, and in particular the needs of the highway department. The items that are new would be um, the fire truck uh, request and the police cruiser. All the other all the other items are highway department items. And we've met with Chris Waldo and I have met with Don Bates regarding his need for a cruiser and also with the um, fire department for their particular needs. So from my perspective, none of this should come as a surprise. I'm comfortable voting on this today because ultimately it's gonna be up to the town 
I think what we're going to have to do at town meeting, and this will fall on me and I'm fine doing it, I'm going to take the same presentation that we had, that I did last year, the PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to update it, add some additional information on it, and just be prepared for some, you know, for some hard questions at town meeting like we always have for a capital improvements request. Yeah. So do either one of you want to discuss anything? None of this should be surprising. We met with Don. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, there's, there's no surprise. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've always already voted on all of these anyway as part of the finance committee. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So you want us to go through each one individually? Okay. So Article 8, Capital Improvements Committee will vote to see if the town uh, to approve the warrant for the town to transfer from free cash $100,000 to the fire truck stabilization fund as follows. $100,000 to save for a new rescue pumper expected to purchase in 2028. How many years are we into this so far? Did we? This will be the third. The third. The third one? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this won't be a surprise to the town either. No, uh, no, know, no. and again, I think that you know, the three of us here who've been living with this information for the whole year, what it's really going to be up to at town meeting is the story that we tell for the residents because they're, yeah. some of this will be familiar to them and some of, it'll, some of it will be new. So I would, putting forth a motion to vote on Article 8. Vote to approve. In capital improvements, vote to approve. Uh, well, we, we just vote to recommend. We'll yeah. vote to recommend. Right. I mean, recommend. Yeah. We're not. We're, we're not vote approved. Just it. okay. it's, it's on the warrant. Yeah. Vote to but, but we got. We're going to say what the capital equipment recommendation so. is. And this is ear. This is earmarked for the rescue pumper. Yes. Does yeah. That, yeah. Does that mean it could change to something else for the fire department or not? Without a separate town meeting vote. No, yeah. because that's. It's only specific to that request. Yeah. Okay. So I recommend. A motion to recommend? Three up. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Okay. We approve. Well, well Three, I mean, we're each doing our own recommendation. It's not like this is not the capital equipment recommendation. No. We put down 3-0. 3 0, yes. 3-0, yes. one absent. And one absent. 3 yep. 0 1, I guess. Yep. Article no, 9. Dash no, 1 is an abstention. Oh. So it would be 3 that's 0 and then parenthetical. However, you do it. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Article 9, to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash $100,000 for the pur purpose of a side entry exit rubber tire compact loader. Motion to recommend? I recommend. Same. So we're 3-0. 3-0. Mm -hmm. Article 10, to see if the town, the town will vote to transfer from free cash $100,000 for the purchase of a plow truck one ton four door short bed six cylinder diesel. Motion to recommend. I recommend. I recommend. Recommend. 3 0. Article 11. To see if the town will vote to transfer $85,000 in capitalization or otherwise provide for a police cruiser, including uplifting. Upfitting. Uh, upfitting. Upfitting, I'm sorry. Uh, Although it is an uplifting thought. <laughs> upfitting. I think he calls it up, up no, I, I did no, I didn't no, understand no, 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 no. a you're, couple you're, years ago, and it seems to have stuck. That's right. <laughs> Bad habits are hard. All right. <laughs> So, okay. so the difference is we're getting this from stabilization, not from free cash. Yes. Yeah. And, that, that's, correct. and that's what we've talked about yeah. many times right. already. Yes. There's lots yes. of that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I recommend. Recommend. Three out. They just adjourn. The, adjourn. Yeah. Well, the... the um, your fourth member is due to zoom in in a half an hour. Okay. Do you want to frost, create a process that he could cast his vote as well, or do you want him just to be noted noted as absent in the record at town meeting? So I guess I would just keep our meeting open until he joins. Okay. I don't know how long he's going to be able to stay. He definitely wants to do Article Two. He wants to be on record for Article Two. But okay. He's going to stay for all the rest of them. Yeah. And he has a vote as the select board member already. True, well, correct. but he couldn't I mean, make a capital. That's right. No, I, I get it. I get it. That, but, that you know, I mean, technically, yeah, he should have a vote on capital, but we, we know what his vote will be. He's being very efficient. He is. <laughs> he is. I'm just, you know. I did, I did pose that question, and it is that's the way it has to be, unfortunately. Yeah. 
Well, Roy's stuck here, and I'm, if you're willing to stick around, I mean, we could wait I'll stick for around. Wait, yeah. We could wait a little while until he comes. <laughs> Well, he's going to zoom, right? He's gonna uh, until he zooms in. I mean, if you were calling again, they'd still have quorum. Well, they would have quorum. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. <laughs> it's a T-Bob. All right. All right. I mean, I, you have a preference, Alan, where you'd like to start? Uh, and you want to start with the... Well, how do you want, Bernie, how do you want to start the uh, Article 2? I, I suggest we start there, but in terms of developing the background, maybe share more. Talk well, about the five, the cola, and, the, yeah. and all that. Yes. Just so people, people understand, too. The, uh, listening in. Yeah, the first of which is um, I needed to let you know, well, we had our last, <coughs> this, this has all been last minute, so I'm still a tad nervous just because I haven't had a lot of time to, anyway. So the last bit of, the last number I got was on Friday night, and then, bless Jan, she did the COLA check for me today. I need to let you know that on the warrant, um, the only number that changed, I'm sorry, the number that changed for the ambulance went from 36088 to 36646 once you added in the 5% COLA. Because the way that article works, in Article 2, it's always 25000 that's taken out. And the balance will be, so sorry, the other article you're going to look at will be, uh, there's the ambulance. It would be Article 14 is the one that changed. What did that change from to? It changed from. Well, I can see what it's to. 36088. So it might not be bad to revoke that because the yeah. number changed. <laughs> okay, so I, I just want to just recap. The reason we have not voted on this in the prior meeting is because we are waiting for finalization of several of the salary lines. Correct. Correct. Um, and we got those resolved. I we did. Yes. We did. Okay, great. Um, and we resolved the snow and ice overtime budget. We did. Line. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. I so, met with Ron and I got the numbers that took okay. out the overtime. Okay. So, so, so yes. we we should be good in good shape the, from the salary perspective. The ducks are officially in order. Yeah, yeah. that sounds great. All right. And then uh, we we concluded that we were in agreement on a five percent call. Mm -hmm. Right, and I did go through each of the raises and make sure that the five percent would not have taken them above what the raise was, and the raises no. were all above. Yeah, right, right, yes. But the five percent would. Have okay. Been. So the the. Uh, Increases in the uh, salaries and are reflected. And could you maybe put that up on, on the screen? Oh, let me see. It'll be in the spreadsheet, screen, right? So um, you have to look at all the. Yeah. I think I've got email to myself. So I'm just oh. where I have the Yeah, it's not going to be reflected in the one I have on here. I'm sorry, I didn't email it to myself. I can't do it from here. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? I sent it to you all. Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I was going to offer his email already. back to you if you wanted me to. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever's quicker. Whatever's quicker. I did send it to you. That's it was like 9 o'clock this morning or 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, 12.06. 12.06, bless you. All right, thank you. Part of this, did you want to look at? Well, let's look at the review of the uh, for, for, for uh, police and then any other. Well, I can go into each of their in yep. individual budgets if you want me to do that, um, which might make sense. But everything highlighted in blue is a, is a wages line that's that's affected by right, coal. yeah, right. Um, All the salaries and, and uh, that are cola, either cola or five percent, whatever. 
Right, so for instance here with Treasurer, what I did was I had um, just put in the formula that it was this times 1.05. You can, I don't know, can you see that? It's kind of, it's so you see this formula up here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's really tiny. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did with all of these. And, um, okay, so it's all FY24 plus, plus 5%. It's, it's plus 5% if there wasn't a specific raise. Right, there was a right, specific raise, right. which okay. was yeah. town administration, um, um, Transfer station, highway, snow and ice, police. Yeah, mm -hmm. those were the five. All right. Okay. So yeah, so I took away all all that other stuff, and then um, found a way to go through these quickly. Just so. So when you come to Article <coughs> Two, everything that's in here is this is just the amount of the cola raise, right, 5%. Mm -hmm. So is this one. Um, that actually didn't get cola. I highlighted it because it's wages, but that was added in. This actually has the additional 1,000 for the police detail, okay. and then it was raised to 6,000. Um, police wages, because the contract, and then there's also cola on that one as well for the hourly. Fire was all um, cola. Highway was all cola. Snow and ice was all cola. Transfer station was raises. Board of Health was cola. Um, and so as you can see, this came to, <laughs> well, you have it in front of you, but for our general fund, it was a pretty hefty percentage this year. It wasn't quite 5%, but boy, was it, you know, hefty. And we were able to do that because if you look further down, you can see that, and this year I, I finally remembered to put in the total for all the schools as well. So you can see mm -hmm. the percentage it went up this year of all the schools was only 1.75, um, which is a pretty low jump for all the schools because we've got 33,000 here um, less and 52,000, so it's $85,000 less right off the bat. So the total increase for the schools uh, was 70000 uh, Veronique, can I ask a question? Yeah. I'm not sure if this applies or not. Um, we had the, the motion in the personnel committee meeting uh, to clarify application of COLA for Jan. Remember that? Where we had... There, there were two motions. One was employees who work regular hours and are paid an hourly rate or annual fixed salary or eligible. Oh, do you mean versus stipend? Sorry. Yeah, Cal, yeah, right. That didn't get voted by the board, the select board, so we weren't able to incorporate the changes, any changes with stipend and mm -hmm. salary this year. We'll have to. So Jan can't apply this policy? Not this year. Not this year. Okay. Personnel committee clarified that only employees who work regular hours and are paid in that, you know paid at either hourly or annual rate are eligible for cola and other committees are not eligible for cola right yeah right but clearly you've applied the cola to, to, to all to everybody yeah. in this, i mean in this. I, I don't i don't recall the select board voting on that mm -hmm. no i'd like to take an issue a look at that there's there's like a list of things yeah that we should yeah. Yeah. So that. Um, yeah. So we clarified that for Jan. That was back on March 27th. Yeah. But that's. That makes Maybe clearly that kind of slipped under the radar here, didn't? It? Yeah. I don't think it has a huge impact on the, on the budget, but, but the year. it does complicate things on her side now. It does, um, and I, and I agree that it's a really important discussion to have. I think it might make sense for us to have. Um, maybe later in the summer or early in the fall to go over it by each position and just all understand exactly which position yeah. it's affecting and how. Yeah. But but that's definitely something the board would have to vote on to, to make the change. Yeah. 
it's, it's a, a worthy discussion, and I'm yeah. glad that the personnel committee took that on. Um, May I just you. make a comment? I think for the uh, meeting, somebody or bodies um, should be prepared to justify that five percent because that you know that is an outsized number for what we've traditionally done and somebody should just have a list of reasons or maybe just in case it comes up because it's, it's not spelled out in the warrant right i mean there's no place but i think it would be a useful idea so it, it, it can't be me because i won't be to, 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 to that end the the answer to that question is the number in red in the bottom right of that mm -hmm. spreadsheet right there and it's you know we did that because we could um, so that's what is, be, is that be, what you're going to say? Yeah, be, because we set out we set out with this process with a fiscal goal, which was to keep the overall increase in assessments to under three percent, and um, you know the, we were able to achieve that goal, and th and that's despite the fact that overall the the, the number that it, it is I'm not going to say concerning the the, the number that. It, it's almost remarkable that because total municipal spending, non-school municipal spending, the increase was 4.86, and uh, normally that would be reflected in much lower co cola payments right, and yeah. general right. angst and, and you know stress all the way around. Right. Um, in in this case, uh, be, be, because of some late breaking things that that broke our way, um, you know, and I'll just focus on the Smith vote. You know, normally we have at least one, sometimes two yeah. residents. Smith, we don't know until <clears throat> April whether we're going to have a Smith Vogue student the next year. And so, and when we don't have one, that is a savings to the town of between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. Just one, each kid. So, um, that's huge. And then the Franklin Tech reduction in students, reduction in assessment. Yeah. Um, the the overall. Uh, you know, very fiscally responsive, responsible budgets by the grammar school and Frontier. Mm -hmm. you know, so this this was one where lots of times it's the town sacrificing yeah. for the scholastic <clears throat> excellence. This is one, I'm not going to say sacrificing, but because the Smith, the absence of a student going to Smith isn't necessarily a sacrifice. Yeah. So um, and but that, it's, it, that inflow versus outflow it, is much it, greater. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and well, so we've had this discussion before uh, every year about justifying the cost of living adjustment. Yeah. And even when it was making it 2.5% versus 2%. And we've had and, years where and, it's been zero. Because right, that was right. all we but, could right. afford. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I mean, but I appreciate Roy saying five sounds like a big number. And I don't think the answer should be because we had the money. You, you know, no. and, well, what, and, what, what, and what we, the way we made it appear okay in the past was we looked at what are the two numbers of what would it be if we made it three percent compared to five percent, and it was nearly nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, it was sort of so saying that's it, true too. It, it, it's that's a really a small point. amount of, to make it five percent as opposed to a maybe three percent. That's a that's a that's yeah. a very accurate and truthful and, and yeah. well. But that's a good well, number to good, have good ready to as well. talk about a town meeting. The, yeah. the other point I, I wanted to make though is that. I fully expect a town meeting, people are going to go individually through these line items and pick them apart. And in particular, a lot of these salaries, where they're ending up, were discussed in personnel committee. So I fully expect the personnel committee to be prepared to answer questions about when somebody looks at highway wages, there's somebody's going to ask a question about why it ended no, up the way it is. There's no coal in, in the highway. But they're it, right because they all received uh, pay increases. Right, above, but they're above five percent. But yeah. what I'm trying, I guess, the point I'm trying to make is people are just going to do a simple apples to apples. They're going to look at the number and then they're going to look at the the increase and they're going to want a justification for it. So at town meeting, as the chair of the personnel committee, I fully expect to be. I have to sit up front and be prepared to take those questions because all of this was discussed in, as in personnel committee. Much of this was discussed. The personnel committee in the last four. Well, five there were months. two two contracts that weren't so. Well, yeah, we only yeah we we and only work we only focused on salary and hourly employees, and, not contract employees. And then the, the other the other part of that too is that, you know, for we I don't know with the, the last few years when the amounts that we were able to offer um, in cost of living adjustments to our town employees 
did not keep pace with neighboring right. towns. We did not, and we're non, and, and we're not ev ev every year mm -hmm. as the spread between what the other yeah. towns were offering and what we were offering, yeah. we, we became less and less competitive. Right. And so this, it, it's, it, you know, it's a, an effort to um, make up, make, back up. It, yeah, catch make back up, up yeah, to some extent, up. but, and, and it's also an acknowledgement that um, the, the specific circumstances that blessed us this year yeah. with regard to the overall inputs and outputs and the fact that we were able to get under 3% mm -hmm. yeah. um, it are unlikely to all line up in our favor again. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Get, especially next year. I mean, not, sure. not just in you know, two sure. years in a row. Yeah. 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 The, the, yes. the, the, the Frontier and Capital and Conway Grammar School, the they can tighten up mm -hmm. one year. Yeah. It is, it's, it's very difficult to do that for them um, mm -hmm. multiple years in a row, mm -hmm. as, as pertains yeah. to us. Yeah, we have and certain fundings for the uh, Conway Grammar School that'll go away next year. The ESSER grant goes away. Exactly. Well, like, the school goes away. That's fifty thousand dollars. Exactly. Exactly. And so, so part of this for me, you know, and how I got to five percent is. Um, the, just the well-grounded suspicion that next year we would not be able to offer that even if we wanted to. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. good year. Yeah. Stars That's, were aligned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did that yeah. pass muster, Roy? Mm. <laughs> well, you just heard that it pass muster? Well, I, I put it out there just I'm because. Glad you put it out there. It gave us a chance to practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. right. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> So, I have no further do questions or issues. Anyone else? No, but are we waiting for Chris? Well, we can go well, ahead as a finance committee. We're still, we still got 10. Yeah, as a finance committee, we can go ahead and make a, uh, yep. a motion to approve okay. as presented. All right. So, uh, is that your motion? I make a motion to approve Article 2 as presented at 12.06 p.m. today by the uh, town administrator. Uh, second. The finance committee. Anyone create a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Four up. Four up. Okay. It's one up. I can't, one I can't hear Tom. He said, please quiet over there. You know? All right. Four, yep. four with one absence. It's funny how one thirty-second vote just encapsulates like just months of hard. This is it. Article two is so hard to put together. That's right. That, that, so, that, that'll be so the why, moving, why is it, why There's is so it? many moving pieces. It's so yeah. hard. Um, why do the finance committee always agree with the select board? We never challenge it. Didn't used to be that way. Well, I remember after back, about, back in the days. Yeah, after about eighty iterations, we finally came to an agreement. Yeah, good. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. It's small, small price. I mean, my thought would be if the share that would be, and I'm going to, between now and the next couple of weeks, draft up the uh, report from the finance committee for the uh, town meeting, is that uh, we're conservatively estimating uh, growth at 100000 and it should be well above that. And our free cash position that we're assuming here is going to be at one hundred thirty-six or seven thousand dollars, I think it is. The and, leftover uh, is one hundred and six. One hundred six. Thank you. And uh, it should be greater than that, and we have a buffer. Yeah. So yeah. we're we're in good general levy limit is over almost eight hundred thousand dollars, and last year was like four hundred forty thousand or something like that. As like excess levy limit. Yeah. Yeah. Can I pivot and just ask a kind of a, a question that just occurred to me, since we're, wait, we're waiting for Chris. I remember at December town meeting, somebody asked a question, was it, was it the, about the historical commission? I can't remember. But nobody from the commission was there to answer the question at town Preservation. meeting. Uh, Preservation? I don't remember what it the was. Person Asking well, the the person at December town meeting that asked a lot of questions was from the historical commission. Yeah, but right. there was nobody who it was a conservation who was there Janet, who, who, who was on it, the conservation who could could sort of speak it. substantively yeah. to the warrant. So I was just going to suggest that if you're on anybody who's on a town board or committee that has any 
interest in some of this stuff, they'd better show up at town meetings so they can answer questions. <laughs> That's always good advice, and we try to share that um, with people. There's yeah. Sometimes there's things that happen. You know, um, there was one year in particular that the finance team, the assess, neither the assessor nor the ta treasurer or tax collector was able to be at town meeting. And I remember in particular that note to self, to try not to let that happen again. Right. Um, yeah. But um, sometimes things just happen in people's lives and they just can't make no, it. No, no, I know that, but that's why I said, that's why when you started talking about some of the wage line, you know, the, the stuff the personnel committee's already spoken about, it's like, I'm prepared to stand up at town meeting and, you know, discuss anything that we recommended, so. Actually, well, Good. Well, finance is here. We will have a couple of year-end line-to-line transfers that requires yes. both finance and select board. So I didn't know if you wanted to schedule another I, I joint sure. meeting at some point to. They're de minimis amounts. You want to wait? I mean, we can have until uh, June 30th to do this, right? I've, actually, Mike told me today, July 15th. July 15th. But you know, mm -hmm. just wanted to make sure that was I'm on your radar. to push it out because invariably some other things might come up. Well, for end of year line to line, hopefully not. But yeah, hope is not planned. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you though. Yeah. Okay. We were talking diminutive amounts. Like I think the two transfers in the aggregate are not even four thousand dollars. We have one is for like sixty million. Do we have any additional business tonight? No, but you want to be around for. Uh, well, that, that's like you do. Board. I'm just going to suggest. Do you want to close the meeting, the finance committee meeting? You want to take up a vote? No, close. Take Do you want to close out the? Do you want to close out a finance committee meeting? Or do you want to wait for the select board member? I, 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 what is she going to do? I don't know. He's just going to vote on He's going to vote on. They're going to vote on Article Two. Yeah, the capital committee, right? No, Article 2 is the operating, the basically the operating. Yeah. That's what we just voted on. Yeah, yeah we did. We did, yeah, we did our business. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. What do you want? Do you want to no no return and still stay here? No, no, this this was was I got to stay here for 4-0 instead of 5-3-0. For the company. Does the elementary school have a landline? That's a good question. Yeah, sure. Then how come they can't call 911? It has to do with the handset, didn't is that what Chris said? Yeah. So um, should we discuss the, this? Yeah, yeah so the, discuss these are these are questions that you know to discuss security vulnerabilities in your own school in open meeting is just not not a recommended practice. Not not best practices. Okay. Um, but uh, well, it could be later though. Um, Doesn't the school have a landline? And if they do the school has a, a landline mm -hmm. at, at, in central office. That is the number when you call. That is just like the town has a landline. Yeah. That, that's the number that you call. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I have a question. Right. By when do I need to have the uh, separate issue? By when do I need to have the uh, finance committee report to you and draft? What would your ideal? Um, I just we Two just weeks? need to make copies for. Oh. Town and so it doesn't have to go to the printer? So it's not going into the... Oh, no, we do that internally. That oh, okay. Internally. No. Oh, good. The warrant and the annual report go to the printers. Yeah. Um, and when's the annual report? I haven't gotten a, a, I haven't been nudged by uh, the town administrative assistant. assistant. <laughs> oh, wait, he didn't, have, he didn't have to have his annual report in yet? You didn't. It's getting, it's getting ready to go, so you better type it up in the morning if you want it in there. All right, I'm saying it now. All right, that means I can type it up in the morning, too. Good. That's good. 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 It hasn't been sent out yet. Well, in that case, I've, I've got my homework to do. It's pretty much ready to go. Oh, jeez. I must have missed your email. Sorry about that. Well, I think with that, I better call the uh, meeting to, uh, to adjourn the meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Two in favor? Aye. All right. All right, thank you. So we need to do the home and lay on the floor? Yeah, to write a report. When's the next meeting? I'm in trouble. You don't need to because you're done with warrants. Well, I thought we were going to have the meeting about um, uh, the retention policy, the, restor the storage of records. I guess we don't have to do that. But we don't, we don't yeah. need finance. Yeah, there's also a warrant date we have to meet. Yes. Thank <laughs> you.
page is this information? Has anybody heard from Chris? Well, yeah, he texted me and said um, it would probably be closer to 7.15. But you don't need him to close the warrant. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to close the window just in to get each other. Oh. Uh, move to close the warrant. In preparation for annual okay. town meeting, June 1. Uh, I'll second the motion. Now you figured out. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. The warrant is closed. Excellent. Thank you. All right. The, you can also talk about a couple other things. Oh, yeah. I forgot to do the second one of those ones. I anticipated that you would let people know. So Usually you're up there, right? <laughs> right. Oh, I figured out. The one for, they were both Back Woodlands in. Partnership, so it was confusing, but the one. It's just time. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, oh, the one at the bottom says the town of Conway is no, known for its gorgeous woodlands. That's the one that was unanticipated. All right. So we have um, just a couple of letters in support for Deerfield. The one that's on the warrant is Deer, for Deerfield River Watershed Association application for Deerfield River Wild and Scenic River Feasibility Study, which has as a twin goal of increasing economic development and enhancing forest stewardship. Um, this this is a, a grant, I believe. What was the town record? No, it wasn't. No, it was. Charmon and okay. I know you do. <laughs> some of the river towns north to north and west to us were the ones doing this. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's a whole woodlands yeah. partnership. Um, yeah, there's time. But we so that that's a, a, we're signing a letter in support of someone else's grant because it's a regional grant. Right. Yeah, I read that letter. Um, I move that we sign the letter in support of so the National, National Wild and Scenic River. National Wild and Scenic River, River designation no, for the Deerfield right. River. Right. Right. Natalie hasn't talked to us about this last. I time. think so. Yeah, I remember. And meeting I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's it's unanimous. And then there's another. Uh, request that we support another town's grant. Um, uh, this is not this is not listed on the agenda, but it is. It just came in, and it has to go out. So it's on the items not anticipated within 48 hours of the meeting, um, and that is the New England Forestry Foundation's proposal um, to study the 21 towns town regions emergency response capabilities as it relates to forest land tourism municipal financial sustainability and the role that ecosystem services might play in remediating these challenges and identifying potential solutions um, uh, so yeah and uh, I'll, I'll just note that the concluding paragraph states yeah. that the town of Conway is known for its gorgeous woodlands, wildlife, and waterways, and we're grateful for the opportunity to further articulate what our rural municipality requires in attention and support. So I make a motion to uh, support the, that grant that I just discussed, the 21 Town Reasons Emergency Response Capabilities that I set forth. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. I don't know if he's going to be able to stay or not for the other ones, but you want to hang on to see if he can. For 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, at least it'll be his choice whether he wants to be marked as absent in the warrant or not. Gotcha. 
Um, so I guess the only other thing was the public safety bids, right? So I think that yeah. Been done. And that also, I think he wanted. Yeah. So. Um, To anybody watching this, I apologize for the uh, lack of activity, uh, the dead air, or whatever you want to call it. The We are waiting for the third member of the select board, Chris Waldo, uh, to zoom in. For the fourth uh, member of the And the fourth Capitol member of the Capital Improvement <laughs> Committee. And it's because we are taking all these final votes on separate, on different <laughs> Warren articles. Um, he has asked for the chance to, to vote. Uh, to, to vote. And if he does, um, if he's not able to cast a vote tonight, he will be marked on the warrants at that is all the residents read at town meeting as being absent. Do so, you want me to, um, to do my town administrator update? Oh, well, good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay, that was Adam's idea. Good, good one, Adam. <laughs> because I'm very, I'm very pleased to be able to. Oh, he's trying to join. Sorry. I don't see him. Huh. There's nobody in the waiting room. Is he in the waiting room? Everybody has to go in the waiting room. Anyway, so I'm really excited that um, the MVP grant got submitted on Friday for $603,120. Um, a good portion of that was for doing um, public infrastructure stormwater repairs up in the Pine Hill neighborhood. Piggybacking off that, because the board has already um, approved and hired GZA to do the hydraulic engineering, um, I've asked the FERCOG to help me with a community one-stop grant, a strap grant, um, for fixing Shelburne Falls roads where the two rivers come down and the culverts have blown out multiple times. And I know runs down a lot to fix it, but because the hydraulic engineering is happening that, that will tell us what's happening down Emerson Hollow, and that affects Shelburne Falls Road. Um, so Megan Rhodes of the FERCOG put in an expression of interest for the town today um, for that grant. And the application opens May 6th and closes June 5th. So hoping that the hydraulic engineering from GZA will be able to um, inform our grant application. So. And that one's potentially $2 million because doing those are extremely expensive. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, who knows if we will get them. They're very competitive. But it is it is a major artery for the town. So I think we have a lot going for us, um, especially with all the prep work. And I still don't see him. Will any of that beef up the bank up, uh, along the South River and the Shelburne Falls Road? Yeah, well... I mean, the road is... Yeah, we falling into the river. We met with um, with um, NRCS and talked to the um, emergency watershed protection engineers, and all they were really going to do was put some riprap in there. So I don't know, um, and in all honesty, the amount of time it would have taken to get all the permitting and everything that they would have had to do through contractors, it's just easier if Ron does it himself. <laughs> so um, I know he'll. He'll be getting to that at some point, but I mean, we have that problem in several areas, right? Mm -hmm. Along yeah. Shelton Falls Road and the South River. 
So, I mean, that, that's something that would definitely be good to look at overall. And there's several more areas that that's going to be a problem mm -hmm. within a, another bad storm or two. Yeah. And that's uh, along the Shelburne Falls yeah, Road, or, yeah. or yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yes. So, um, and then um, the uh, Regional Resource Group RG, their um, the assessor's office is contracting with them now to become the administrative assessor, Lee's old position. Um, I think her last day is tomorrow, and so we met uh, Steve Casey today, who will be the person that was sent from RRG to help in the assessor's office. Really nice guy, I think you know, it worked out great. The hours haven't been completely set yet, but we're looking at probably Wednesday afternoon because their meetings are on Wednesday and then Thursday morning. So it'll be about eight hours of public time then. Uh, what else? Our ARPA was submitted, our ARPA reporting. <laughs> That's, that's really pretty much all I need to update. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the vault. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So it, we, we did have moisture coming into the vault, and it's been affecting some of our records. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hang on a second. I need to email them a blank. Oh, you've got this. Could you email them a blank? He just he needs the link. He says the link on the site isn't working. For can you just call? I don't want to speak. I guess I could. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can call yeah. into the Zoom, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, I was looking for somebody to help us with this, and rather than go straight to remediation and pay an awful lot of money, I found out from a friend of mine who's a board of health director that the DPH does these kinds of investigations. So we have Mike Feeney coming from the Department of Public Health on Friday and is going to be looking at you know this as water damage and will be giving us recommendations on how to alleviate the problem and kind of take care of it. So. And it's coming in. The floor in there? It's not coming in the floor, it's coming through the concrete, it's coming through the walls. Oh, sorry, I've got him here. Okay. Hi, Chris. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> we hear you. Okay. It, it, it says very yeah, personal meeting room, but it's not like connecting me. That's strange. I've had Zoom issues. I, I do apologize. Anyway, you're here now. Woohoo. All right. Do you want me to just take care of capital so that you guys can sure. finish. Chris, can you hear me? It's Phyllis. I sure can. So capital improvements is here. It's Roy, myself, and Bob. We recommended 3-0 on all of the four capital improvement articles for the warrant. But we wanted to give you an opportunity to either to make your recommendation or not, you know, since you're a member of the committee. Okay, so that's four and O oh for all of them. Great. For all four. Okay, yes. Thank you. All right, so I can adjourn our meeting and then yep. you guys. Okay, so I'm going to adjourn the uh, Capital Improvements Committee. Second. Adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Capital Improvements Committee. And just so you know, Chris, they held, they held their vote over for an extra half an hour for you. <laughs> Courtesy. Just so you know, just so you know, because Half an hour we'll never get back in our lives. Yeah, be, 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 because other, otherwise, you know, the, the, the warrant would say that you were absent. So, um, there you go. So, um, and, and the same reason we actually have held, you know, we, we haven't voted, the select board has not voted um, on the remaining items. Uh, for the select board for the same reason because we figured if you want to be marked as absent on the town meeting warrant that should be your choice not something we impose on you um, but uh, so so uh, you know I, I don't know if you've gotten to take a chance at the all new and improved article 2 that came out at 12 
this afternoon. I do. I have it in front of me. And, um, yeah. And, and do you have any do you have any uh, questions or comments, or are you ready to vote on it? I'm ready to vote on it. It hit that arbitrary number we wanted. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. So on behalf of the select board, all those in favor of Article 2 as currently constituted? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Well, actually, we didn't have a second. That wasn't a proper motion. Oh, yeah. Second. All right. Aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous. Um, and then we had couple other votes that we haven't done yet. 28 through 30. 20, yeah, 28, which was the revolving fund bylaw. Um, and we're adding a revolving fund for the transfer station um, to be authorized to spend from the fund as the town administrator. Um, fees, charges, or receipts credited to the fund will be income to the transfer station from fees charged for materials deposited at the transfer station. Expenses payable from the fund are expenses related to the administration of the transfer station. Restrictions or conditions on expenses payable. Um, there's a limit of $10,000 for the fiscal year. And it is to be uh, to be operational for fiscal year 2025 and subsequent years. Um, so, um, I make a motion that we approve Article 28. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And Article 29 is um, the bylaw for the associate, I'm sorry. Article 29 is a revision to our bylaws regarding associate members. And um, it's to be read in conjunction with Article 30 um, because Article 30 illuminates it. Um, Article 29 provides that. Um, it already provides that only Conway residents shall be allowed to serve as voting members of boards committees or commissions. Um, it adds the following new language. However, appointed associate members of town boards will be allowed to serve and vote whether town residents or not. And then Article 30, um, and I'm just explaining, we'll vote on these separately, but Article 30 um, is uh, a, a revision to the bylaw, town bylaws Section 62, Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals, and it includes a new first sentence, and that first sentence reads, the planning board shall consist of five elected members and one appointed associate member, which board shall act on all matters within its jurisdiction under this bylaw in Chapter 48 of the general laws in the manner prescribed by the said law and by this bylaw. So, um, and my own explanation here is that the state law currently allows for planning boards and zoning boards of appeals to have associate members that vote um, if there's a bylaw allowing them to do so. Well, actually, it doesn't need to be a bylaw allowing them to do so, but in Conway's example, uh, circumstance, we had a bylaw that didn't allow them to do so. So we're amending that Article 29 seeks to amend the general bylaw. And then Article 62 is the specific reference Article that would, 30. I'm sorry, Article 30, Section 62 of the bylaw, thank you, would allow the uh, zoning, the zoning board of appeals <coughs> and the planning board to utilize the state law that allows them to have an appointed uh, associate member. So uh, this, that's not a town resident. Right, and because only the planning board and the ZBA have associate members, like that, effectively this only applies to those two That is correct. boards at this point. Okay. That is correct. There's no other town committees that have associate, associate members. members, and um, at this point I don't see that the 
uh, I doubt that this current select board would be inclined to create that. Um, so that's. Uh, so I move to approve um, Article 29 and Article 30. You got the one at a time. Oh, okay. Uh, Article, Article 29 as written. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Two. I oppose this article. Okay, 2-1. Gotcha. Um, so, Article 30, um, same motion as written. I vote that we approve. I'll second. All in favor? Nay. Aye. Aye. It's 2-1. Okay. okay. And um, Article 31. So this is the Festival of the Hills article. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The 31 and 32 are. Yeah. 31 is the Festival of the Hills legis piece of legis home rule legislation that we're asking the state to do on our behalf. And 32 is amending the bylaw to create a festival of the hills committee for the town so um i move um that we approve article 31 as written authorize and request all in favor aye aye, aye. that's unanimous and, and I'm article 32 to make the festival of the hills committee by uh, uh, a town committee by by bylaw um I move to approve Article 32 as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. And Article 33, the citizen's petition. We don't have to okay. make a regulation. Yes, it's a citizen's petition. All right. So I make a motion to, wait, wait. We didn't close the warrant, did we? Yep. We, we, yeah. You closed okay, the warrant. We did. All right. Yeah. We, we earlier, the one vote we took without you, Chris, was to, to close the warrant. Was to close the warrant. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good vote. All right. Oh, we're done. With that All right. Place. And then, um, public safety. Oh. Yeah. So, the, we have to discuss the public safety building bids. Um, my inclination would be to, Make a motion. Make a motion to reject the bids uh, that we have received. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add to that or discuss? I just think I we should. I talked to with Veronique about this, so I'm fully aware of why we would need to do that. So there's no opposition. Yeah, I just want to clarify for the public who may be watching: is that the way that the bids came in? We, at this point, don't feel like we have the funds <laughs> to pay for the public safety building in the way that we had anticipated. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I'll move to reject the public safety building bids. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. We hope we can have another crack at it. Um, And is that anything else? Nope. All right, so um, any select board member comments or concerns that need to be addressed? I'm fine for now. Um, the announcements, we already made the announcement about June 1st, the eve from five to eight is the senior prom. But prior to that is town meeting. Prior to that, June okay. yeah, June first, ten a.m. is town meeting. Um, and then May sixteenth, twelve to two, is the senior uh, countywide senior luncheon at the Field Memorial Library. There's a whole bunch of other things too, but those are the announcements I'm making. And our next meeting is May sixth, which is one week from tonight. Yay. Yeah. In this location, 
And we'll see you all then. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you for dialing in, Chris. Take care. Yeah, you all have a good night. You too. You Take too. Take care. Thanks.